Now to this story in our Rare Disease Day was celebrated this week as part of an international campaign aiming to shed light on the plight of around 400 million people globally who live with these conditions. A hundred million of them are on the African continent and now African scientists are striving to enhance the accessibility of medical genetic testing in the public health sector. The aim is to empower clinicians to tailor make a treatment for rare diseases and ultimately lead to the improved patient outcomes. ENCA's Kevin Brandt has more. Four-year-old Dizan van Jartveld's parents explained she was born with Noonan syndrome, a rare condition that affects many parts of the human body, particularly the heart. She was, I think, three months, um, three months old when she went into Tigerberg um, ICU unit and she actually got baptized in hospital because the doctors thought she's not going to make it. And I like to call these little kids my little warriors, and they are little fighters. And yeah, I love them to bits. And with design, she's my little warrior, and she came through that as a champ. So yeah, she's going to big school um, next year to grade R, and we are so proud of her. That gives me for me a blink button. I am not over. So you have to come and see what you can do to see it. Ons loop en die en ook kan ik zien ons gemeenschappen rond ons zien dit ook kan en ons aan spaar zo dingen van zelf spreken, maar ons weet die challenges wat achter daar kunt als je en wat die ouder die er maakt. Zo vandaag is niet weer voor ons een voorrecht om aan de ouders te kunnen ontmoet wat die ziele pijke stap of die pad stap wat ons stap. Clinical scientists at Stellenbosch University have now partnered with researchers in Africa and Europe to make medical genetic testing more available. In South Africa, it has not reached the point where we can roll this out into mainstream point of care uh, for everybody that's uh, looking for a diagnosis. That's what we want to change with this new cluster. It's called Genomics uh, for Health in Africa. It's been a dream of mine since I came back from overseas because I was exposed to what genomics can do in, in the USA, in Europe, in Japan. And why can't we do that here in Africa? We have the infrastructure now. We are training the people to uh, be able to handle what, what comes next as far as this genomic revolution is concerned. Tato Chabani explains her six-year-old daughter, Okwenam, was diagnosed with Fraser syndrome. A very rare complex eye condition is part of the syndrome. I did say to myself, no, let me just treat her like a normal child. Although the, the doctors did tell me that she won't walk, she won't talk, she won't even go to the toilet, she will always stay on the pampers, like, and then she was epileptic on the ward. So they also tell me that she'll be like that for the rest of the life, of her life. Then I said, no man, God is there. He's the one who's gonna decide what is right for my child. But when he, she was 11, man, she started to walk. And I never treated her like, um, like the way they told me that she would be like not normal because even now she's going to a normal school. Researchers emphasize the importance of expanded access to genomic testing suggesting it could lead to more efficient treatment plans for patients. For the many individuals grappling with these conditions this advancement offers the potential to circumvent unnecessary tests, treatments and hospital stays. Kevin Brunt, Cape Town.